Okay, guys, I hope everybody's doing well, and I'm with my main man, Clarence. We're just going to talk about a few things uh, about what's going on in this world today, and uh, obviously there's a little bit of unrest and unease in the world, and as me and Clarence are having more and more dialogues, we're, you know, both me and him are getting to know each other more, and having a fun, we're having fun at it, and I mean, we're like two goofy brothers and stuff, but, um... But it, it I, my, I'm getting my eyes open all the time. Clarence is sharing experiences with me, and I think it's so critical. So what I want to talk about is, to a lot of white folks too, is um, what our experiences are is not what other people are experiencing. So, for instance, if you said, you know, uh, in the world today I don't see racism. In my view and what I've experienced, and you may be completely accurate and true, and it doesn't make anything wrong, but it's important for us to hear other views, and Clarence is going to share a little bit. So I want to say this up front. I've been working with Sheriff's Office for 23 years alongside with deputies, partnering with deputies and law enforcement. And uh, I don't want to be controversial or anything like that. I just want to simply just say the fact that what I've experienced, and it does not make anyone else's experience. It's my experience, not anyone else's. Everyone else has a different experience and a different path in life. But i got to say on record, for 23 years, I have seen uh, pretty much no really racism. I have seen uh, training, and I have seen from supervisors on down, nothing that suggests to treat people uh, unequally. Uh, I have seen attitudes. I have seen people that have been tired, frustrated, wore out. I've seen inmates probably get yelling at a deputy and a deputy walk over and maybe even take it out on someone else after they got, uh, you know, had to absorb a lot. So there's a lot of stress. If you know anything about law enforcement, there's a lot of things going on, and they take it home with their families and stuff. It's a difficult job. Let's open up the lines of communication. Let's talk more. I started asking some hard questions to Clarence. I said, well, Clarence, what do you think what's going on and stuff? And he responded to me, and I said, boy, maybe we should put that on video and, and, and let people hear. I think this is a key just to get things out in the open, start clearing the avenue. And I'm not saying, okay, we all had a big love fest and a hug and we're done. No, we're trying to get something started, and Clarence said it the best. He's here to heal and to educate, and I love it. I'm like, educate me, brother. So, All right, so Clarence, tell me some things uh, along this line. <laughs> I'm already getting him. Well, I want to first say that um, all black people don't hate cops. Um, all inmates don't hate deputies. I have not had any uh, bad encounters with any deputies, um, but... Uh, like I said before, I would like to kind of educate um, those who are viewing on the history between African Americans and cops. Mm -hmm. So the meeting you had last year, mm -hmm. because of the experiences that I've had with cops, Tony had a meeting last year and we had some law enforcement there. And I had explained to Tony afterwards, I said, I felt a little weird. And he actually even gave me, I think he gave me a tour of the, uh, of the jail. And I had told Tony, I said, it's sad, but there is something about being on the other side of the bars that makes me feel a little uneasy. Um, so I guess in a nutshell, um, I think racial profiling does happen. Um, I believe that my experience with law enforcement has been totally different. I think it's been the complete opposite um, of yours. And in fact, as I said on some of my messages that as you guys see me more, you'll hear my story. But uh, one specific example is about being pulled over and getting caught with the guns that I had. Mm -hmm. um, I had guns and I had weed. Mm -hmm. So the cop charges me with uh, carrying concealed weapons, mm -hmm. which were the guns were in my name, was carrying them wrong. Mm -hmm. But I had an ounce of weed, and he kept the weed. Mm -hmm. So that kind of reverberates of what, what we continue to see and hear. Mm -hmm. That's the pot calling the cattle black. And I think at least the, the black men and women that I am a part of, uh, 
We just want to see accountability. We don't want to see cops be done uh, wrong or be accused of anything that they have not done, but it, it really does get discouraging when those type of, uh, when you have those type of encounters mm -hmm. where, um, you know, you arrest me for having the guns, but you kept the weed. What mm -hmm. did you do with the weed, mm -hmm. right? Right. So yeah. you can't, you, so, so that, that creates a, um, that creates a mentality in you, yeah. especially when you see it over and over again. So, yeah, um, I, yeah I mean, you know, just to back Clarence up and say, uh, again, white folks, we got to realize we got to open up the communication and go out of our way and ask questions. I don't think I don't know if you were just going to like voluntarily give me information. I kind of had to dig at it because I think Clarence was being considerate to me, and he's like, you know, I don't want to create anything that's there. No, no, Clarence, I got to hear from you. So I think maybe if we start being a little bit bold and saying, look, tell me. You know, and, and, and again, there yeah. are times, though, people are like, don't want to relive it and just say, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like, look, I don't want to bring it up. And I'm like, oh, I'll back up off of that. That's traumatic. But what we're seeing is, and Clarence kind of vo vocalized it the other day, is when you see these images on television, news and everything, yeah. he's going back to those times that were very rough for him. Uh, and a sweet gentleman, pastor, had mentioned today so many years ago. A gun was held to his head on an arrest, or that they, they didn't have any charges for him and they let him go. But that stays with him. And then as soon as these things come up in, in all the media and everything, boom, these are hitting on triggers. And if you know anything about trauma, right. uh, you're replaying this yeah. thing in your head all the time. It's not going away, and it can stay you know, all your life. So uh, I think we've got to start bringing up and seeing how we come across. We don't know what, what we're coming across. And, and, you know, unfortunately, the media puts it back in your face all the time, too, and stimulates some bad things. So, all right, we just said, let's put something on video and let's start something. So hopefully we may, maybe make a couple more of these and hopefully uh, Clarence won't, you know, uh, I won't drive Clarence crazy. He won't drive me mm -hmm. crazy. We mm -hmm. want to ultimately, we talked about too, that might be something else we want to talk about. We want to get back to the point where we can say to each other and be bold and, and not scared, right. you know. But we're now we're all kind of scared of what we'll say and everything. But we hope we can open up and be transparent and just be, uh, you know, closer than ever before. But this is my man. I'm so proud of him. He's working with us. He's contributing in a great way. And he's the MVP in my life. I love this dude. Likewise. And uh, I, I, I think we want to share that with you guys. Let's, we're just praying for stronger relationships out there.